Hello everyone, my name is Dennis Rosa. I work as a developer advocate at Couchbase and previously I have been working as a software developer for over 15 years and also have contributed to a lot of open source projects. But today I would like to show you guys how the state of the art technology uh, looks like when we talk about databases on containers. So let's get started. But before we start showing the demo, I would like to give a small tip for you guys. Uh, whenever you're reading articles uh, online, if the title of the article starts with a question, in 90% of the cases, the answer will be no. For instance, those are all real articles from 2016 asking, should you run your database in Docker? And the answer for all of them were no, you should not. Uh, basically, the argument was that uh, containers are designed to be stateless and databases are stateful applications. And that's why you should not mix one with another. However, if we fast forward to 2021, uh, you will notice that most of the articles today, they are not questions anymore, right? They are all uh, um, affirmations. And you even have things like uh, running databases in Docker at scale. So it's very interesting to see how uh, how in just two years or so, things change a lot because we see articles dating back from 2018 that are already say, yes, you should run database in Docker. And the natural question is, okay, what have changed? Why in just uh, two years, uh, we completely change our mind? The answer for this question is naturally a little bit complicated, but I can highlight five major factors that are relevant for us today. Uh, the first one is naturally performance improvements on Docker. Uh, we are getting uh, close to bare metal performance, and this is naturally a, this was naturally a major boost for Docker. Uh, we also have uh, production grade images now, so pretty much all database vendors have uh, their own official image out there. And naturally, because we have the, the official images, it's far easier to set up and configure uh, a database using containers than installing by yourself on bare metal. And lastly, yes, we also have Kubernetes and operators, which is the, the major uh, topic of this talk. Talking about operators, um, if you're not familiar with what an, oper what an operator is, uh, so operators are essentially application-specific controllers that extend the Kubernetes API to create, configure, and manage instances of potentially uh, complex stateful applications on behalf of the Kubernetes user. Uh, it essentially builds upon the basic uh, Kubernetes resource and controller concepts, uh, but also include domain and application-specific knowledge that automate common tasks that are better managed by computers, right? So long story short, with operators, you can automate the management of your stateful applications. Well, and essentially, that's exactly what we always wanted with databases, right? Um, developers always expected databases to work out of the box. But historically, databases are this exactly opposite. Like, you even need to hire someone, like the DBA, just to take care of the database. That's the magic of operators in general. You can automate the management of your database by simply installing uh, an application inside your Kubernetes cluster. So let's see how uh, this works in practice. Okay, so I have here, so control get nodes, three nodes running on AWS. And I also, I also have installed already the Couchbase operator and the service broker. Uh, the service broker, I will talk about it uh, later on the presentation. So right now, if I run control get pods, you see that we already have some pods running. Uh, the ones relevant for us right now is the admission controller, which essentially validates the cluster configuration, and then the actual operator, which manages the database. 
So we already have uh, those three here, the, those two here. And I'm, I'm going to run kube control create minus F couch base cluster. And cool. Now we just created our couch base cluster. Uh, let's see how it works in practice. So this YAML file is in fact, uh, I'm just specifying the secret here. So the username and password that I'm going to use to access the database. And here I'm saying as well, uh, here's the bucket. So, I want you to create a Couchbase uh, sample bucket. Uh, so a bucket in Couchbase is something something similar to a schema in a relational database. And I'm also saying that I want three replicas of each document, which means that, okay, I can lose nodes without uh, losing data because I have copies of this data. And here uh, we have as well the, the Couchbase cluster configuration. And on this Couchbase cluster configuration, I'm just fine, hey, I'm running Couchbase 6.5 and I want uh, three nodes and all the services here. So Couchbase is kind of modular so you can pick the services that you want. So if we go back here to our uh, our terminal and run control get uh, pods, you will see that now, okay, our uh, cluster is already running. Everything that we are going to do during this demo, we will uh, do it while our application is live. So I'm going to deploy now a simple Java application. So let's deploy here. Control uh, create minus F uh, spring put apps.yaml. And this application is just a dummy application that inserts uh, data in the database itself. So now let's forward the port to uh, my machine. And then finally, if you come here and access Couchbase uh, localhost 891, you, we can access the Couchbase uh, web console. So when you install Couchbase, you get this web console by default, and that's how you manage your Couchbase uh, cluster. So I can log in with administration password, and you can see that if you come to servers, you see that we have those three servers, servers here. Okay, but let's do one thing first. Uh, we have already the, couch, the bucket here called Couchbase sample that we have specified on our um, YAML file here. And hopefully, if we click here on statistics, you see that we have uh, our application is inserting data on the on this bucket. So what I'd like to do first is to add a new bucket, and you see, let's call this test. you see that this bucket actually disappeared. The reason why is because the operator keeps comparing what we specify here in the YAML file versus what we have in the actual database. And on the YAML file, we only specified one bucket. When the operator noticed that there is um, a bucket and the state of the database is different than what we have specified in the YAML file, it automatically reverts to the correct state. So if I have, if I want to uh, add a new bucket, I need to add on the YAML file and the YAML file will always be the source of truth. Okay, so here we have our three nodes running and let's do some crazy, crazy thing here now. I would like to simply queue one of our nodes. So uh, we can run control, delete pod, and then CB example 002. So this is where the DBA uh, wakes up, right? Because you have to call him and say, hey, we lost one of the nodes of the database. In our case, we just uh, lost this node. So if we run again, kube control get pods, you see we lost a node. And then if we come back to the database, you see that yes, uh, we noticed that the database, the, this node is unresponsive. And, and then what should we do? In this case, nothing. So the operator, if we run again, the same common, the operator will notice that we have specified three nodes, uh, but we only have two. So it will spin up a new node for you. And then 
join the node to the cluster and trigger data rebalancing. So you see, we just recovered from a failure with no human interaction. The operator can do this kind of thing for you. Uh, and here we're just rebalancing. So rebalancing gu guarantees that, okay, now that I brought a, a brand new node, I have copies of, I, I need to move copies of this data to the new one. So that's what rebalancing uh, does and it should be uh, done in just a few seconds. Cool. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, let's do something even more aggressive now. So instead of using Couchbase, 6.5, uh, I want to do to use Couchbase 6.0. So let, let's upgrade the database. So I can save this file, come back to my console, and run kube control, replace minus f Couchbase cluster. So I just replaced my configuration. And what's going to happen now is when the rebalance finishes, uh, the the, the operator knows how to upgrade the database. So eventually it will add here. So if we run kube control, let's clean first. If we, if we run uh, kube control get pods, you will see eventually that we'll add a fourth node. And this fourth node uh, will essentially be already a, a new node with the new version. So we will add a new node with the new version 6.6 .6, and then rebalance, rebalance the data and then remove an old node uh, with, the, with the old version. So if we run our common again, we'll go to the pods, you see that now we already have CB example 004 and eventually it will remove CB example 000. So let's go back to our um, web uh, panel here, and that's exactly what's happening right now. We add a new node, and you see that here on the dashboard, we have Couchbase 6.5, and when we, we connect to Couchbase, uh, we, we can actually do that now. So uh, we can, instead of connecting to Couchbase uh, 000, if we connect to Couchbase uh, 0004, you see that our new version is actually uh, Couchbase 6.6. .6. So essentially the operator can upgrade the database for you. And if we come back here now and we run kube control get pods again, you see that, yeah, we have four and soon 0 will be uh, removed from uh, the cluster. And this is the beauty of the operators. Like it can literally automate, uh, you, you see here, 000 is already gone. So if we come back here, get pods, 000 is gone. And now we have 005, which is essentially the operator is slowly adding nodes with the new version and removing the nodes from the, from the old one. The operator can also do a lot of other cool things. So uh, for instance, let's say instead of uh, three nodes, I want six nodes or four nodes. Uh, that's not a big of a problem. Uh, all I have to do is to change here the size, come back to my, my console and then apply uh, kube control, replace, and then uh, apply this configuration again. Or what if I want to my application read more than write? If I, in that case, I could, because Couchbase is a modeler, I could say, okay, if application reads more than write, uh, maybe I don't need eventing or analytics. Maybe I just need in data index and query and search as well. Uh, but what I can do is to say, okay, I want um, three nodes running uh, data and I don't know, 10 nodes running uh, index query and search. Or if my application read, writes more than, than reads, I could do the opposite, right? So I could say, no, no, I want 20 nodes here running data you know, and only three nodes running index query and search. 
So that's the beauty of uh, Couchbase and those more new databases on uh, containers in general. Uh, not all databases have this kind of flexibility. This is something naturally more specific to Couchbase. Uh, but the cool thing here is that we are doing these things while our application is live. So your, our application is still inserting data uh, in the database while we are scaling up, scaling down. So here, I think that we already, uh, uh, if I run again, we already upgraded the database and why, why we were presenting the whole thing. So this is a simple illustration that shows uh, the different components. Uh, naturally, you can um, export all your metrics to Prometheus and visualize them on Grafana. We already have the exporters for that. Uh, and yes, you can define where you want to, uh, which services you want to run and which kind of persistent storage you want to use as well. So uh, both for um, local, per, local ephemeral and, and uh, remote persistent storage. And naturally, there are a lot of things that the operator can do that I won't uh, be demoing today. Uh, some of them are, uh, I would say, support for ECU. Uh, you can uh, configure automated backups. You can um, hibernate your cluster. So let's say you want to just pause the cluster and store the data somewhere. You can do that as well with uh, the operator here. But a really cool thing that I would like to demo today is the service broker. So the service broker allows the operations team to manage, uh, take care of the definition of the cluster. So literally, your experience here is to have something like a database as a service solution inside your own Kubernetes cluster, inside your own company. So for instance, a developer, when they need a database, they 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 don't need to write something like, oh yeah, I need a couch-based cluster, which has three nodes, replication, and then you need to ensure the security, and it has to be replicated, it should use the specific disk. You don't need to specify anything of that. What you can do is just on the service broker, you can specify the plans that you have. So let's say couch-based basic, which is just like three nodes uh, with, uh, I don't know, maybe eight, eight uh, gigs of run. And then when they, they can just sim simply ask, hey, my application needs Couchbase Basic or needs Couchbase Advanced, which is, let's say, a 10, no 10 uh, nodes uh, cluster with 32 gigabytes each. And that's my second demo today. Okay, so we are back to the terminal. So we can run Control or actually just K, uh, get pods. And you see that I removed the cluster and uh, we have now the service broker and the catalog, right? So now I have to do is to run um, svcat and then I, I specify the class and the plan here is uh, CSP basic. So catch base basic, and then the password of the cluster, and I hit wait. So I hit this button here, and now um, the service broker uh, will receive this request, and then we'll pass the specification to the operator, and then my cluster will be automatically provi provisioned. So just to show you guys what's happening under the hood, uh, here on, uh, this is essentially the YAML that has all the configuration, so here we have uh, Couchbase Basic, and you see that, okay, you have to specify the password, uh, and then this cluster will have the minimum number of three nodes and the maximum number of nine. If I want to use, let's say, a different plan called uh, CB standard, and the CB standard um, essentially already has uh, more things on it. So for instance, the Couchbase uh, standard already has cross data center replication uh, by default. So essentially, when you deploy this cluster, you can specify to which other cluster your database will be replicating to, which is something very useful when you need some disaster recover uh, strategy, or when you actually have like one cluster based in US or another cluster based in, 
Europe, for instance. And when we go back here, eventually we will have uh, our cluster provisioned. Let's wait a few more seconds and done. So here uh, is our cluster configurations. And if we run now um, control get pods, you'll see that we have now three nodes uh, running Couchbase in a single cluster. Finally, if you don't want to use Kubernetes, you still have another option, which is uh, using the, the Couchbase Cloud, which is our database as a service offer. And essentially, we will just uh, provide you a database that are uh, that is managed by us. Uh, and spoiler alert, we use virtually the same operator under the hood. Naturally, there's some other improvements, but uh, a good portion of the operator uh, is used on the Couchbase Cloud to manage the whole thing. So you literally have pretty much almost the same experience. Uh, this is not something that we just started. We uh, it, it is pretty much the most uh, solid operator out there. And if you want to know more about this, we have a book that was written by uh, Anil Kumar, which is our PM on the operator. And we also have a bunch of other talks uh, online as well. That's it that I have for today. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the chat or uh, feel free to reach me out later on the social media or by email. So I hope you guys enjoy it.